There is an elephant in the room. This plate is from July 19th, 1952, which is the evening that a massive, massive UFO flap happened over Washington, D.C. that was caught by multiple radars. It's quite fun, a coincidence, right? <laughs> it's quite the coincidence, and, and it has to be said that that, that did happen. And maybe uh, I would dare say, though, if that's what this is, a photographic plate from the Hale Telescope at Mount Palomar Observatory would constitute probably the best UFO photograph ever taken, right? There is something even more fun about this. When I discovered, or actually I didn't discover it, when my friend Dave Altman pointed out and this date, because it was he who recognized the date when I mentioned like 19th of July 1952, after he had pointed it out, I was wondering, hey, what about the dates of my other candidates? And I went to this paper uh, where we had been looking for alignments. It's a paper called like, is there a background population of uh, uh, like high albedo objects? I don't remember the exact title, but last year we put it on archive and it's a paper that has issues time issues getting published because it's a little bit too transparent, I would say, <laughs> about the alien angle. And we had five candidates where there were two that were statistically significant and one that was the best of all. And in the one that was best of all, you could see five objects in a line. And it was called Candidate 5. And if you look at that one, that is from the 28th of July, 1952, which is like uh, also inside this time region of the Washington flap. It's uh, one day after the second weekend, I think. I think the, the second weekend was 26th to 27th of July. And this one happened on the 28th. And I found it super funny. I like that kind of funny coincidences. We have to remember, too, that this is before satellites. So this is, this is before Sputnik. So we're... We had nothing up there. And I mean, at that time, 1952, we were still experimenting with captured V2 rockets and things like that and developing for the rockets. And we just didn't have the technology to put something out there that would explain this as human interference, so to speak, right? But what if there were some secret military experiment that resulted in the Washington flyover, but also resulted in that they created some kind of very radioactive particles that were just captured on the plates that those nights. Oh, that's interesting. So there might have been a secret nuclear test that might have done it that we could do because remember, obviously, World War II and Trinity testing and that maybe there was something thrown into the atmosphere that was. But couldn't you look at other photographic surveys and look for the same thing, you know, reoccurring? Maybe we could actually look for those for the photographic surveys that are from July 1952 and see if we can find more signs of, let's call them UFOs or, what's, well, or any kind of UAPs. Or <laughs> it, it's a possibility. Unidentified astronomical object. Uh, I'm coining a phrase. Uh, yeah. It's an interesting coincidence. And of course, it has made me wonder even more. Now, what... Other photographic surveys from this time period are there? I'm, I'm sure the Vatican was doing it with the astrograph that they had. So what other sources of data can you look at? Maybe the Lick Observatory could be um, a good... Well, it, it, it could work. Unfortunately, the Harvard plates don't seem too accessible. There are photographic plate surveys, uh, I think, from Ukraine, but I don't know if they have the 1952 year. Now, what's the future? In other words, we've got really ideal seeming survey telescopes coming online soon, probably the, the biggest being the Vera Rubin Observatory. Um, Are you thinking in terms of searching modern data sets like that when we get it? Actually, we are, we are going to try to go a little bit ahead and create our own project called Exoprobe, where we are going to create like, mul or where we are going to place multiple telescopes and they are all going to be filtering away human space debris and human satellites. And we're going to search for this kind of multiple transients, but also search deliberately for signatures of ET probes or unidentified objects that are leaving short transients. We're going to really focus on transients in, the, in these searches. And the goal will be like if you use multiple telescopes, then if you see some very short flash in several of them, you directly know that it is a real observation and not something on the plate. Or sorry, not something just in one image. I'm still saying it's <laughs> independent, independent telescope corroboration of a transient would be amazing. That's exactly what we want to achieve. And then at the same time, if you use like, let's say at least two telescopes, you can uh, 
you can triangulate and you will directly say like it's it's the, at this and that distance. And now if you use 10 telescopes, you will get a very accurate distance because you can uh, like get the, um, the location, the 3D location much more accurately if you have many more combinations of triangulating 